Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome to Celebrating Act Two again with Michelle Fabrica, our love coach. Michelle, good to see you again. Good to be here. Now, uh, I wonder how many of our in our audience have taken a quiz and put into practice your first uh, three tips from the last time. Um, you have some more for us? I do, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so my first one really is calling, I call it listen deeply. And it's really uh, an experiential exercise to do together. And let me just give you the rationale for it. A lot of times when we're together, we don't always take the time to just fully listen uninterrupted to each other. And often we'll get into responding or whatever, problem solving something. And it's really important to take the time just, just for a few minutes, maybe 10 minutes each or so to take the time to sit together where you can look at each other in, into each other's eyes. And one person is the speaker and the other one is the listener. And the speaker just gets to kind of empty out and talk about whatever they're feeling, whatever they're thinking, fears, joys, uh, dreams, whatever, frustrations. And it's just time for the other person to just listen and hold the space and say thank you at the end of that. And then, then you switch. And then the other person's turn to share. It's not a response to what the first person said, but it's just a sharing of whatever's present for them. And the other person is just listening and holding the space. And it's really valuable to dive into that together and make time for it. And like I said, if there's anything, issues that come up that you need to attend to, circle back at another time later to attend to those. Michelle, uh, just a, a question on this and, and some of the other things you've brought up, but particularly on this uh, area. Uh, there could be uh, couples that have trouble listening. Uh, do you ever, uh, within your practice, actually act as a as a, a, a live coach? I could even see you doing this uh, uh, in, in a forum like this, for, let's say for John and myself. Um, but we, we actually do listen to each other. But uh, if people who don't listen to each other uh, or are having trouble doing that, uh, do you uh, intervene as a live coach in these situations? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of what, you know, I'm also sort of a certified mediator and that comes in there as well. But it's basically like, you know, giving the person who's speaking their full share. You know, sometimes there are emotions that come up. Sometimes there are things that might not be, you know, true according to the other person, right? And so, but but this is not the time to interrupt. It's just to let them kind of empty out. And so we can really get the, the fullness of their experience and what it's like for them. We're not listening to respond. We're listening just to listen and empathize. empathize. And it's, it's very valuable. It's, it's, it's healing to be heard at that level. And we really get to learn more about each other. Uh, Michelle, I know that uh, communication is, is really big in a marriage, in a relationship. And we're talking about spicing up your relationship. Um, when you don't have grounds for communication or you don't know how to communicate well, it seems to me that's the time when we need the love coach uh, to be there to mediate for us. But it seems to me, and I know I've read read this and heard this over the years, there are rules for communication. There, there are rules for listening. Um, uh, when, and there are rules for talking. You know, if it's your turn to, to empty out, things like, well, you can't be accusatory. It's not about, you know, it's not an opportunity to say, you did this, you do that. You need to do more of this. You need to, you never do that. And so it's, yes, it's the listening. You can't listen and be um, defensive, but you can't empty out and be accusatory. So it seems to me that this exercise might be very difficult for a lot of people. Yeah, and I love that you brought that up because I think it's so important when we're speaking, and that's probably something I should have included there, speak about your own experience what you're feeling, what you're thinking, what you're noticing, not you did this or I didn't like. You might say something about you didn't like when your partner did something and that you felt upset when you noticed they did something, but that's still speaking about your own experience. And we really wanna be clear about not making interpretations about what the other person might've been thinking or feeling. All we know is what we saw them do. 
or what we heard them say. And when we make interpretations, oftentimes we're wrong. And that often, I, I didn't mean it that way. You know, we get reactive to that. So if we just share, like, as if we're observing, like a reporter, okay, they said this, they did this. That's a kind of a cleaner way of expressing ourselves. And it's more likely to be heard by the other person. Sure, sure. But when when you know, people have finished listening, uh, are there some other things they can do besides just yeah. well, now, well, now we finish it, listening? Before you move on, Art, I, I wanted to, I wanted to, get, to stay with the listening thing. Then, then uh, what I'm going to do is, in the spirit, and especially with our love coach, uh, Michelle, with us, I'm going to listen to you. <laughs> well, good, Art, and I'm going to make sure this isn't about you. Because... Oh, it's never about me. It's always about you. I've listened to you. <laughs> See, now this is this is an interesting dynamic, Michelle, because. We're business partners, but we do act like a married couple. In fact, I know from other business relationships, that's often the case. People act like they have a relationship. It's they have a relationship, sexy. absolutely. Yeah. And they're collaborating yeah. on something, some common All the time. efforts, goals. And yeah. Sure, and it can get intimate in the sense, a business relationship can get intimate in the sense that you're, you're you you want your ideas to be heard and implemented, and other people have competing ideas in the world of business. So this brings me to what I was going to interrupt for. I years ago, many years ago, I was at a business. It wasn't a I don't know what it was. It was a conference. It was a team building exercise, and the exercise was fascinating because it had nothing to do with business. It was. Everybody, you, let's say there's six people in the group. You you uh, put one person in the middle, and the other five people have to tell this person something good about themselves. Mm. You're a terrific manager. I love the way you distribute those paper clips. You know, whatever it was, it was all about business, but it was reinforcing the positive of what this person is good at. Even if you hated them, even if you were business rivals, you were in that group, you had to say something nice about every single person. And the person in the middle, and everybody got a chance to be in the middle, the person in the middle got this wonderful, never heard before affirmation of, holy cow, these people, maybe they like me, you know, because in business, you don't work with people you necessarily like. Um, so that kind of what reinforcement seems yeah, to me yeah i would call it sharing appreciation sorry yeah it, it's, sharing but appreciation it's exactly right yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, it seems to me that in our sexual intimate uh, relationships which is what we're talking about today you need that same kind of you need to somebody needs to tell you this has to, this conversation has to be positive it you have to you have to say something nice about your partner. It, is that yes. part of what you're talking? Yes, and well, as we talked about before, um, sharing appreciation. So that's one of the love languages, and so oh, that is right. something yeah. that might be you know, affirmation or appreciation. Yeah, so that might be something that definitely. I mean, I recommend people do that as much as possible. And I think I might have mentioned before that there really needs to be a five to one ratio of positive interactions to negative interactions. That's been kind of proven. And oh, um, so that's yeah. really important. And, and, and sharing your love languages, expressing in the person's love language is a way of doing that, The five, getting that five to one in. But I would say the listen deeply one is mainly, obviously, if you can, stay with things that are also positive. But, you know, sometimes there are things that are frustrating. And that might just be like, you know, good for your partner to learn. Wow, I didn't realize it was that difficult when I do this or that. You know, it's like it's good to know the impact we're having on someone else. So I wouldn't only keep it positive. You could do one exercise where it's just you share positively. I love that. And then you could also do one, well, let's also be real here and talk about what's maybe not going so well. But once again, not as a complaining, but sharing our own experiences, how it impacts me when this or that happens or yeah. this or person does something. So yeah, I, I, had, I had forgotten about the uh, uh, the love language uh, thing. So I, I guess I failed the quiz. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, big, big time. 
but speaking, yeah. but but speaking of recovery, because we're talking about taking care of each other and recovery. So now, once you've listened, okay, I've really listened. Uh, what are some other things that uh, we can use to spice up our life? Yeah, yeah. So the other one is really kind of counterintuitive, maybe, but is to make time for yourself. And a lot of times we don't prioritize that as much as we might like or as we might think would be valuable because we really need to be continually, I think, growing and developing as individuals. So are you spending time on your own interests? Um, Do you make time to do things separately, things that you love doing that your partner maybe doesn't want to do with you? And it's totally okay to bring all that back to your relationship. Oh, I had this great, you know, experience at this dance class, or I'm learning about woodworking or, you know, whatever. I'm just making some things up there. But, but things that really bring you joy and light you up, go do those things and keep, you know, keep playing that way. Keep developing yourself that way. Yeah, we have to, we have to have something to appreciate in our partner, right? I mean, when you... When you fall in love and you you decide to have a relationship, an adult relationship with somebody, it's not just about sex, although it seems to me it's primarily about sex. Um, it's about having an appreciation for who your partner is, finding right. something to admire in them. And when you live together for any number of years, whether it's a, a marriage or a relationship, the longer you live together, the more routine everything becomes and the more and the easier it is to forget that what you found special about them, what you found it might now it's just there every day. So it's not special anymore. Yes, and I would say that it's more about for yourself. You're not going to do, you know, I don't suggest you go off and do interesting things so that you're still admired by your partner. I, I say you do it for yourself because that's gonna bring your own aliveness and your own fire, and then they're going to appreciate that energy and aliveness in you. So it's really about doing what serves you, and yet that also serves the relationship. Now, so, does uh, it, all uh, of this uh, true? Okay, John. Okay, John. Sorry. Okay, John. I got carried away. Yeah, you, you can you, tell I'm very you, excited about you this topic. Are, you are, and I think that we're going to set up a one-on-one re, uh, uh, a session with Ooh, you and good. Michelle I could use that. outside yes. the, the purview of the cameras. but. Um, I also read uh, some uh, some of the things that you've written, and in order to um, uh, be available to other people, uh, you need to also uh, take care of yourself. And uh, I wonder if uh, that's something that uh, you could talk about as well, in, in taking care of yourself in order to keep yourself fresh for uh, your partner. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that, you know, we've all heard about self-care and it's it's basically about how can you keep yourself as healthy, as vibrant, as resourced, as just feeling good in your skin. And also, I guess, you know, we are going to get into um, more topics around sensuality and sexuality, but, you know, grooming and, and hygiene, things like that. Like, you know, it's easy to just maybe wear your same old sweats all weekend and, you know, maybe not so attractive to your partner or, um, you know, maybe you're just, yeah, Forgetting to shave or, you know, whatever it is. I, I don't know. Everybody's different that way. But just to remember those things and to, um, to to care and put some attention there. So does that extend to your sexuality as well as all these physical things, uh, taking care of yourself? Uh, absolutely. I mean, I think that some people are very sensitive to, you know, smells and touch and its sensations, obviously. So it's good to be mindful of those kinds of, you know, personal uh, grooming things that you might do or neglect to do. and um, But mainly it's about how do you feel in your own body? And we can get into that more. But in fact, that is my next tip, if you don't mind me jumping to that. Um, I really invite you to, to uh, people to explore their own sexuality. And really, you know, I don't just mean masturbation, although masturbation is great, or I like to call it self-pleasuring because it has a little more positive ring to it. But this is to discover what turns you on, like what feels good to your body and you know, head to toe, what areas of your body do you like to touch? What, how do you like to touch your genitals? Um, you know, there's ways to explore sensations with your, around your anus, uh, nipples, you know, ears, toes, everything. I mean, everything on your body. And it really is, you know, can be about what music might enhance the experience for you or certain clothing. I know someone who has to, you know, likes to wear really silky clothing. And so 
also your beliefs about, you know, what's important to you. How do you want, how do you feel in your body? And where, when is it okay to feel those kind of sexual alive feelings? Is it only in certain situations or can you feel that when you're just out in the world and um, going about your day? Can you feel that aliveness in your body all the time? So you're saying uh, that you need to really understand your own sexual uh, needs as was uh, as w both mentally and physically. Sex is mental yeah. and physical. Yeah, and, and, and spiritual. You need to explore, I would even, yeah, yeah, you need to explore those so before you can share them with your partner. Well, I wouldn't say before necessarily. I mean, this can be an ongoing. You know, don't do, don't wait. You know, <laughs> but. <laughs> You know, in parallel, like say you haven't done that in a while, had some time to yourself, um, take some time for that. Maybe you go off and both do that separately and then you come back together and share what you learn. Or maybe later you, one of you just explores himself playfully and the other one observes and like, oh, well, you like that, tell me more about, you know, so you can kind of, like I said before, play doctor together, whatever it is, but kind of get curious about how your body responds now and, um, you know, expand what, what feels good. Great advice. Great advice. And uh, all of these things are going to be, I think, as you said, pick the ones you like and, and discard the rest. But all of them have the opportunity to really uh, spice up a relationship, which is what it's all about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Mo Michelle, thank you again for uh, a, a brilliant conversation that I'm sure many people don't have. So, uh, really quite valuable, and I look forward uh, to the next time uh, when you have uh, a whole bunch of topics, but uh, maybe uh, some uh, an additional uh, tips or tips to spice up uh, our relationship. So thank you again. Yeah. See you soon, Michelle. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube and tell your friends. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.